This is the tragic and horrific story of Habiba, a young girl whose father and husband were ghosts. When Habiba finally opened up, it turned out that nothing could be more bizarre than her story. She and her twin brother, Salisu, grew up with their father in a lonely flat at the Aja area of Lagos. They led a relatively comfortable life in the house where they only depended on generator as the only source of electricity. Although their father was not engaged in any kind of work, he provided everything they needed. According to her story, my father was not working. He never left the house except on a few occasions at night. But if I asked for 50,000 naira, he gave it to me. We had no visitors and we visited nobody. All they had to do was sleep, eat and watch home videos. Habiba and her twin brother Salisu grew up to know only their father. They did not see any woman with him to call their mother. To go out of the house, their father gave the twins a small guard, each which they simply clasped to their palms. And then they bust out on the road and bought vehicles to the market to purchase food items like wheat, semovita, macaroni, spaghetti and rice. They never consumed yam flour. On a particular day, however, Habiba forgot to take her guard as she stepped out of the house. What confronted her was a cemetery with a lot of vault and a bushy environment. She screamed and dashed back inside. Then her father told her to pick up the guard as it was called. As she clasped the object to her palm and then ventured out, this time she found herself on a busy tide road. Another incident which frightened her happened in the night. My father went out whenever he wanted, but it was always around 10 and 11 p.m. He would not take anyone along with him. But there was a day I begged him to take me out when he usually went out, and he obliged. When we got there, something strange and fearful happened. It was like a canteen there. I saw a small cooking stand with a big pot on it without firewood or fire, and the food was boiling. I asked my father how it was possible for food to cook without firewood and fire, and the woman selling the food became angry and slapped me. She asked my father who I was, that I was not part of them, but only wanted to expose their secrets. My father begged her and we left the place. After that incident, her father refused to take her out again so that she would not be privy to the secret and circumstances surrounding their true identities. Since then, she refused to take food from her father, but only cooks her own food. By the time Habiba came of age, her father did not allow her the choice of a husband, but asked her to marry someone identified as Abdulaziz. The man moved in with them and behaved like her father. Soon, she got pregnant and when she eventually went into labor, she said her father had went out, brought back a particular kind of leaf which he applied on her novel and she was delivered of a baby boy without any complications. Her father who acted as the midwife took care of the placenta. She bore her two other boys in the same manner. Her children were named Abdul, Rokib and Jamil. But what revealed the true identity of her father and husband? She disclosed that all the jealously guarded secret began to come to the open when Sally Sue declined to marry a lady recommended by their father. They continued their routine life until their father considered Sally Sue mature enough to get married and brought a lady home for him. But Sally Sue was said to have refused outrightly to marry one of them. Habiba said she asked him what he meant by one of them, but he told her not to bother as she was only a woman who was oblivious of what was happening. One day, Salisu was eating and he suddenly coughed, slumped and died. My father did not feel any sorrow as a result of this. He buried my brother in an unknown place. When I asked him about where he buried him, he said some Muslim clerics had come to pray over his body and he had buried it. Not convinced by his response, I said to him, When I had my babies, no clerics came for the naming, but they came for the burial of my brother. Disturbed by the shocking death of her brother, Habiba confronted her father that she wanted to know his family. That decision marked the beginning of her journey into a new world. Eventually, my father agreed to take me and the children to his hometown of Kwara State. He said he was from the Imam's family. When we almost got to his family house, he said he wanted to check on someone close by and pointed the house to us. He gave us his uncle's name who happens to be the Imam and he directed us to his house. When we met his uncle and explained ourselves to him, he was taken aback. He eventually showed us his grave and he said my father died over 20 years ago. Amid bewilderment, Habiba left for the only place she knew as home, Ajah Lagos, but could not locate their house again. 
What worsened her situation was the mysterious disappearance of the guard which her father had given her that could have guided her back to the house. Seeing that she was caught up in the middle of the ocean, she went back to Ilori in an effort to locate her mother's family house which her father had mentioned to her. She managed to strike up a conversation with some people who introduced her to a radio presenter who in turn narrated her story on air. She also met a lady she followed to Ede Ocean State and stayed with her for about a month. It was while in that city that she traced her husband's parents. The sad part of it is that until this day, Habiba is uncertain of her age but assumed that she could be more than 20. Habiba also lamented that it was when she got to this side of the world that she realized that she was too young to have given birth to three children with the fourth on the way. Also, she did not know there is a place where people struggle to earn a living until she got here. It saddens her that she now wakes up every day with no money. Habiba also said she never attended a school but that her father had the knowledge of the Quran and had Western education. According to her, her father was the one who taught her and her brother Arabic and a bit of Western education. On how she got to her husband's village, she said she went to observe the evening prayer at a mosque in Ede when after prayers, she was chatting with the Imam and her ghost husband appeared to her and told her in clear terms that she was suffering. Her ghost husband then asked her why she was obstinate about returning the children with her to his village. Her ghost husband also went ahead to say that if she refused to do so within three days, something unpleasant would become of the children and he disappeared. At that instance, she asked the imam if he had seen the man who just interrupted the conversation. But the imam said no. She then collected 200 naira from the cleric, fetched her children and four of them at about 8 p.m. boarded a motorcycle to the junction. At the junction, she asked another cyclist to take her to her husband's village, but because it was late, the man had charged her 1,000 naira, whereas she was only left with 150 naira. But it was necessary that the children go to her husband's village that night because their father, who was diseased, demanded that she took them to his people. As she pleaded with the cyclist, a man standing by mediated in the matter and gave the cyclist about 500 naira to take the woman and her children to her destination. The strange man also wrote down the motorcyclist plate number and asked the motorcyclist to drop them safely. As they alighted from the motorcycle, Habiba said her husband appeared to her physically. She said he pointed to the shop opposite the mosque as his mother's and the third building to the shop as his father's house, saying, I shall ask for his father. The ghost husband then gave her his father's name. As they conversed, her husband said a lady who was passing by was his sister as he called her. Between the time Habiba looked in the direction of the lady and looked back in the husband's direction, he had disappeared. Currently, Habiba resides with her ghost husband's people, but they are yet to receive her with an open arms because the aged parent of the ghost husband were confused as to how their first son, who died at a tender age, could have fathered three children. They are suspicious of their supposed daughter-in-law and are acting cautiously around her. But she dismissed any suspicions of the hand motives, asking why she would want to lie herself into a poor home. Also, Habiba's mother-in-law had been down with stroke and the father-in-law is a farmer. Financially, they are not capable of supporting Habiba and her children. Habiba, who said the clothes she uses now were given to her, added that they were rags compared to the ones she used to wear in her father's house. What pointed to the fact that she could truly be from another world was the way she was lamenting openly about the treatment meted out to her by her in-laws. She said if she had made up her story, rather than bringing her children to the old mud house, she would have taken them to the governor's house. The mud house, she said, did not compare with her father's house in the other world. She said she only left her father's house with a black bag and a Quran, which are still in her possession. She also claims to have dreamt of her father once, who was all in tears, lamenting with his finger to his mouth that he warned his daughter not to embark on this journey. She also said her husband pleaded with her in the dream each time his people offended her. She said her husband said the reason he insisted she took the children to his parents was for his parents to have the joy of raising his children as they did not have the opportunity with him even as a first child. The parents of the ghost husband, however, sadly said they could not remember where they buried their son, which is why they still find it hard to believe Habiba's story. Sadly, Habiba said these days her husband only appears to her in her dreams. Do you think Habiba's story is true or she's just making up stories? If you have any similar experience, kindly share it in the comment section and do well to subscribe.
Thank you.